Thanks for coming back to the control room. It's Kai. And Kira. We're playing Super Mario RPG on the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. Classic. We've been playing a lot of RPGs. Kira's been shepherding me through... Tales of Symphonia. Symphonia. So, here's one of my all-time favorites. What should my name be? I know I'm Mario, but... Booger. Booger? Yes. Why'd you put yourself as Kai? I don't know. Oh, I don't. Let me try, uh... What if I made my name 8008? Wow. <laughs> well, you need... 80,082. Brotat? I'm Brotator. I'm a Brotator. Alrighty then. So I'm gonna be. So anyway, we start off with the classic story in Mario lore. Princess Peach is out enjoying my flower garden. I didn't know Mario kept such nice, lovely flowers, but of course, here comes the home wrecker. Oh wait, is this one where she's like, she's in another castle that has game ends? Kinda! Your princess is in another castle! Yeah, well, <laughs> so, something interesting here. This came out the exact year the N64 and Super Mario 64 came out. So this game kinda got lost in the lurch, but it has since become one of the most, the best rated Mario games of all time. Because it was Mario's first foray into RPGs. I'm not good, with the exception of you helped me through Tales of Symphonia, I'm not good at a lot of RPGs. I love RPGs. I feel like I'm... Pokemon. I feel like I'm better at RPGs than anything else. Like, I suck at the shooter games. I suck at... <laughs> look at these Koopas. They look totally nothing like Koopas. I don't know. I just... I, I like... I prefer RPGs. Or, like... Puzzle games. Ooh. So, your standard attacks, you see it in the cross formation with all of the buttons on the controller, and it's really easy to actually keep track of. Oh, that's good, yeah, because there are some games that, like... Yeah, you have to scroll through some menus, but it's not bad at all. And... It, it looks like this is, like, turn-based. Yeah, a little bit. And these enemies have weird names. Like, those are Koopas, but A, they look a little different. They kind of look like Koopas mixed with, like, Rito Revolto. Yeah, kind of. Hey, Zed! I can't do a Rito voice. He doesn't say Zed, he says Ed. Uh, Ed? He calls him Ed. Oh, man, come on, I can't. I can't defend myself. Oh, don't tell me I'm gonna... I know how to defend my- yeah, there, you have to do time hits. Like, if you press the A button at the right you time- You don't even get close to him and he, like, punches. Yeah, that's the animation. Let me see if I have- So anything. what, is he, like, throwing his hand? I'm gonna throw my hand like a rocket! Um, there actually is a character that does that in this game. Gino. We've heard about- you've heard about Gino. And take a look at how cool this castle was. Yeah, I was gonna mention the castle when we were outside. Like, this castle is something else, and this game gets, like, right to it. Yeah, Mario's not screwed around anymore. He's not gonna be going through eight worlds just to get to Bowser. Yeah, it looks like you just have to go to the castle. I mean, Peach is right there. Is this the end of the game? You're Toadstool. I don't know if you're gonna lie Mario! What would I say? Whatever Toadstool said. Prepare yourself for the great beyond. Oh, oh. Oh yeah, I tend to forget that Peach's name is 
Princess Toadstool. Cause everyone, it, it's Princess Peach. It's either one. It's like in a oh! book. It's like in a book I'm reading right now. It's um. We're gonna hit the chain. Crazy is my superpower by AJ Mendez, also known as AJ Lee from WWE. She mentions in her book she wanted to be like strong and powerful and. She, uh, she says that Princess Toadstool is strong. In this game, she is. I will tell you, I'm not going to spoil anything for you, but she is actually useful. What was that sound? And honestly, when I read Did Princess you? Toadstool, I was like, that's Princess Peach, right? And, like, yeah. I had to put down the book and, like, go on Google from my phone and type in Princess Toadstool and I was like, oh, okay, that's Peach. Just no one calls her Princess Toadstool anymore. Yeah. Look at Mario's little Peach son. Oh no, he's throwing hairs! Just like the D-bag in the uh, apartment next to us. <laughs> was hammering yesterday at 5.45 a.m. on a Saturday. Hammering something like right next to my head. Kai slept through it. I didn't. I think I was gonna give her to you, but you can keep her. You're always in my way. This is uh, I, I, I don't know if I'm gonna say all these lines. You don't have to. It's funny when we do it with Tales of Symphonia because we give them different accents. Yeah, but this is Mario here. We know who Mario is. And I just beat Bowser. And the game is over. Yeah, we're done. Whoa! Uh -oh. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What is happening? Well, there's a big old star in the sky. And they split and... Giant sword! With a face! Check this out. So what are we doing? Like, the sword and the stone now? You might say that, but Bowser is the least of everyone's worries right now. Boy, oh boy. And he knocked me all the way back to the pipe house. Why is Mario running a vape shop? Wow. <laughs> Look at the little toad down there. Yeah. Oh, He's just... like on his butt. You gonna do country toads? That'd be amazing. Hey Mario! Ow, that hurts. Called a door. To get in and out of their houses. But I have a giant pipe I can go through. Came to pick up Princess Toadstool. What is she, a debutante or something? Look at this. I got all my overalls and stuff hanging off the wall. You get a green bed. And I got this big old block you can just say that. It's easy as pie. Mario's pad. That's what it's called. Mario's pad. Brotator's got... Uh, Brotator, I forgot. So where is she? What, what, what do you think happened, Toad? She went to Wimbledon! Here we go again. Where's my brother? It's Super Mario Brothers! Come on, man! Jeez, game designers, make up your mind. Well, I mean, Luigi... I mean, he's like never in these games. Well, anyway, now I've got a map screen. I'm going right back to Bowser's Keep. I'm going to sort this out. I'm going to hash it out. I'm going to scatter, smother, and cover it. Whoa, look at this dude. It's like Bowser mixed with like a sword. and This is a kind of trippy game. Yeah, it's the Smithy Gang, huh? So they're going to take over the nosy characters like you. Hey! Kayfabe, pal. Don't say characters. Dude, look, he's just chattering his teeth like one of those little toys, and now he just destroyed the road to the keep. And this is something that's good enough to have on your wall. 
So we're gonna go back to Mario's pad, I guess. And we gotta go. Go take a nap. I could. Maybe I'll. Look. He's got a little green bed. He's got his he hats. He's jumping on the bed. Toad, stop trying to steal my watch. Hey, hey, look. On the wall, guess what Mario has on the wall that you need to have in the apartment, Kai? Uh, cuckoo clock. Somewhere to put your keys. Well, Mario doesn't have keys. It looks like he has a little key ring over there. Wait, there's a chancellor in the Mushroom Kingdom. How cool is that? We actually have government officials. I never knew that the Mushroom Kingdom had government. Excuse me? I mean, I guess being a princess is... I mean, that's not really governing. It's yeah, being know, royal. Exactly. Yeah. And royal and government, two totally different things. I mean, if you look at the royal family... They have no power. They, they have no power. I've actually done the research on this, because I was like, what, what do they get? No, nothing, really. They can make suggestions, but we can all make suggestions. Just because the queen wants something doesn't mean it's going to actually happen. Unless it's like, you know, in the <laughs> castle. Why did I rush back? You had to tell me something. That's right, we need to tell the challenge. You already told me that. Stop expositing, runner. You know, it's actually... Uh, I was, um... I, I read some articles on, like, the things that some of the royals have to do. And some of the stuff they have to do is kind of kind of messed up. Set the fork on the left. And... Well, I mean, not just... That's just... I'm just screwing around. Of course I know it's more than that. Hey, and I get little bonuses. Like, if you defeat an enemy a certain way, you can get your HP back, you can get a free hit, you can get... If you use items, sometimes you can actually get a freebie and get the item back, so you don't have to buy everything. Nice. This this game was really cool about that. But yes, we got EXP, we got coins, we got all the stuff. Anyway. So, like, one of the rules of being a royal is that, like, when you're having any kind of meal with the queen. If the queen is done, you are done. It doesn't matter if you're like, haven't eaten in six days and you're starving and like, you're done. <laughs> but apparently the queen is actually pretty good about like, saving like one bite of food and then waiting until everyone's pretty much done and then finishing that last bite of food, which I'm like, yeah, that, that's nice for then. That's like, that's like Sarge yelling time. For those who don't know who Sarge is, when Kai and I were in Junior ROTC, I was in it for the full four years, Kai was in it for one year, and leaned out on us. Just go slinging your jaunts, and I had different things I wanted to do, okay? Just saying. Swing he weaned out on us just like he weaned out on our camping trip we did a few years okay, ago. Okay, I was gonna tell the story about the redneck wedding, but there actually is. There is a marriage plot in this game, and I may just save it for then. Okay, can you stop interrupting me? It's like the second time you've interrupted me that I'm trying to tell a story. Because you are a ween. Anyway, so we had two instructors. We had a lieutenant colonel, and we had a senior master sergeant. Obviously, the lieutenant colonel, he was, um, you know, in charge of everything, and he was a super nice guy. Such a pushover. Oh my god. Gotta love him. Um, and then, um, so that was Colonel, and we just, just got to call them Colonel and Sarge. They weren't all like, oh, well, you have to call me Lieutenant Colonel, or you have to call me, you know, whatever you call Senior Master Sergeant. Like, apparently, like, Senior or Sergeant or something or whatever. That, those, those names for those never made any sense to me. But Sarge, he was in charge of our um, drill and ceremonies class, which is where we would really learn how, learn like the, the finer details of like marching and using um, rifles when marching. So armed, armed, um, un unarmed drill, and we got to do sabers and all that kind of stuff. And Sarge was the one who was in charge of that. At the end of every class period, we would have to stand in our for our squadron formation because it was Air Force Junior ROTC, and then we would wait for the school bell to ring to signal the end of the day, and then he'd yell "Time!" and we'd all have to yell "Thank you, Sarge!" and then sometimes he would hold it for a few seconds, but he never hold us too long. 
It was just a fun game that he would do. We just, and I'm sure he had the biggest smile on his face. Like, yeah, sometimes he he told us we'd be like, "Hey, I gotta go catch the bus, Sarge, go any day now." He'd start talking about random stuff. Any time, thank you, Sarge. And then we'd all like have to like run inside and grab our backpacks, and you know, everyone would start heading wherever they needed to go after school, whether it be the buses or going out to their car, or getting picked up by their family. Or staying after school for drill team or whatever. Which was me most days, because I was on like every team and every club that our JROTC had. And see, I'm talking about something and then Kaida starts talking about something really, totally different. This is what I deal with people. Yeah, but I'm telling a story, and then you're, like, not even responding to it. Well, my whole thing with this is that I remember, like, just, it was a handful, it was mostly Sarge, sometimes it was with Colonel, but then they would get the substitutes. I'm like, we got a substitute for some reason in the class. I don't know why, but then you just have to be like, thank you, sir, ma'am, and it was weird. It's just like... It was probably because Sarge, like, took some time off. Maybe he had... Something that he had to go do. Maybe he had vacation. Maybe he wasn't feeling well. Teachers get time off too, you know. Not enough. Yeah, not enough. For sure. But I think typically if Sarge was out when I had Sarge, um, I think Colonel would typically just fill in. Because I think Colonel, uh, he didn't have any classes because obviously all the kids who were going to be, who would be in his classes would be in drill and ceremonies at that point. So at the end of the day, he had like a free period and he would just work on whatever he needed to work on. Or he would, um, sometimes he would come to our drill and ceremonies class and watch us and uh, work along with us. But most of the time he'd be inside working on teacher stuff or working on whatever he needed to work on for JROTC to get us ready for whatever we were doing next, so... But Sergeant Colonel, we loved them. I loved talking to them. Uh, they would, on Fridays, we would have our physical training time, which nine times out of ten, we would be playing um, team sports. And nine times out of ten, it was uh, football. Football. Yeah. I didn't play football because every time we played football, somebody got hurt, and I didn't want to get hurt. So I just walk around the field with them, and then they'd be like telling me stories. Or Sarge, who is a thespian, would have his scripts with him for whatever play was coming up, and he'd be practicing his lines with me. So that was always fun. Favorite play: Lost in Yonkers. My my favorite had to be Don't Dress for Dinner. Oh yeah, well. Don't dress for dinner and then lost in Yonkers. And look at this big mother effer with a hammer. 12 Angry Jurors was really good, but you didn't get to see that one. No, I did not. And I wish I did. I think that was like the first one I saw Sergeant. You missed me spinning on a flower earlier. Really I saw you spinning on a flower. And I was missing everything, and you missed a chance to call me out on it. A loser. Yeah, okay, yeah. Let's spam some more Naruto while we're at it. I wasn't even thinking that. Yeah, what, 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 what were you typing up? Sasuke is faithful to his wife. Look at all that rain! Look at me making it rain up in here! Making money. Yeah, well, okay. she's like, oh, she's faithful to his... Like People on social media are being ridiculous. They're pulling the whole Sakura isn't Sarada's mother thing. And I'm like, those who say that clearly have not watched the entire episode. Of where that is explained that she is indeed her mother because the umbilical cord belonged to Sakura and Sarada and Karin was her midwife. And Karin, Sakura, Sasuke, all three of them, who were the only ones who were, you know, at Sarada's birth, all say the mother is Sakura. At least the people online are calling her, um... I will give you the name in a short story. When we moved, when me and my fam, I had to help my family move to a new house. Well, not a new house, but from the apartment to the house. We had these neighbors, and 
the next door neighbors came over and welcomed them and everything. And it was clear that they were having a bit of party time. And so, like the next day, me and my dad are still moving stuff out of there. It took like three or four days to move everything out of one little apartment into a whole house. That's how crazy it was. It was an upstairs thing. But all of a sudden, this guy next door is yelling at this woman or something. My mom heard something about him yelling Jesus or something. And she's like, oh, wow, I didn't know that he loved Jesus. That's nice. But I swear, this guy was so drunk. He, I think I heard him yell this to the lady or whoever he was with. Now he's yelling at a guy nowadays. But he goes and he yells, you Babylonian whore! And I'm like, at least they're not yelling that at soccer. Calling her a Babylonian whore. There have been people that have called her a whore. So I've gone on there and I'm like, uh, well, see, the only man that she has slept with is her husband. And since when is sleeping with your husband making you a whore? I mean, like, they're married. They have a child together. Like, that's not a whore. A whore means, like, you're sleeping around and sleeping with every guy you meet. And so the other thing about the Sakura thing is that people were saying that Sasuke is unfaithful to Sakura, that he's cheating on Sakura with cutting, and I'm like, most of the time that he is not in the village, he is in another dimension. And now, he pretty much goes from being in another dimension to back home. Like, yeah. he, he, he does his missions, and then he comes straight home afterwards. Now you have little toads in your- wait, no, this isn't your place. We are, we are in the Mushroom Kingdom now. We're in the Mushroom Kingdom, and we've got so many characters to talk to, especially this little fella. Oh wait, little fella, wait, what? Let's say you and I get hitched in a few years, okay? In a few years. Oh, no. I ain't even going near that. I ain't even going near that. Well, check out what I can do. My mother borrowed a wedding dress from somebody, so I can't do that. Yep! Come on, I can do it. Hold on, there's something cool I can do. And I'm like, no, I'm not borrowing somebody's wedding dress. I'm getting my own dress. Uh, I'm gonna stand here until I get it right. You're riding a toad. And then you're- oh, now, you're <laughs> now he's drunk. Ma Mar Mario just got messed up. But let's go up to see the Chancellor. I'll wait for you down the hallway. Yeah, sure you will, little fella. He ain't gonna outrun me, and he ended up outrunning me. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now check out this green toe with the mustache. How cool is he? What his name's the Chancellor? What's his real name? Oh, that's the that's the Chancellor. Yeah. We heard an explosion or something at Bowser's. I almost dropped my spores. Well, that seems like a personal problem. It is a personal problem. She departed for your house hours ago. What is she? Your daughter? She's not my problem anymore. Could Bowser be behind all of this? And Marty's gonna have my for us. Uh. He's telling stories. Because Mario can't talk in this game. Oh, he can't talk in this game? No, he cannot. And it's my responsibility. Like, do you not have an army? I have an army. We have a Hulk. Do they need a Hulk? Because they're using me and my brother. Your brother has not been seen. Is he Is he in this game? There's a cameo. There's like a reference to him. Oh, a reference. No, but he, there are mods where you can play as Luigi. Well, yeah, you can mod anything and play as Luigi. Egad, I love that. Like, what's the first game that Luigi actually shows up in? What, like a Mario Kart? Uh, Mario Brothers, actually the original arcade game, and Super Mario Brothers. It's just that in some of these, like, mainline, like, like Super Mario RPG and Sunshine, you know, you don't see him. Uh-oh, I did not equip my hammer. Yeah, and that whole, like, um, rumor that went around the internet for several years saying, like, oh, if you do certain things... In Mario Party, or not Mario Party, Mario, Mario 6, yeah, Mario 64, that Luigi will show up. Yeah, no, it doesn't, it doesn't work. But, actually, he was in the game the whole time! What? He was in the game the whole time. They did, like, a lot of mining in the source code last year, 
and it was a big dump from Nintendo, a lot of old data and secrets, that his model was in the game. You just don't see him. Yeah, you cannot. You know, Miyamoto even said you were supposed to play two players, but he couldn't get the thing to... It wouldn't work properly? Work. Yeah. Hmm. So I've got Maybe they should... Maybe that's something they should remake for, like, the Switch. They should! They did do, like, what was it? Super Mario 3D All-Stars, but they just did ports of the games and they didn't do anything with them. Which is a huge lost opportunity because if you HD remaster and add new mechanics to these games... Well, wait, didn't they, like, remaster Mario 64 for Switch or something? Um, they did it for the Nintendo DS and added Luigi, Yoshi, and Wario. Oh, okay, for some reason I thought they did it for the Switch. But they need to do it for the N64 version for, like, the Switch. Yeah. Oh, and I can do something really... Something kind of naughty in this game. Check it out. I know where the princess's room is. You gonna go on a panty raid? But if I look behind like a certain sh it's like a certain chair or a certain lamp post or something. It's the bed. There's an item in here. Don't tell me it's not at this point in the game yet. On. It's Princess Toadstool's used bra. It actually, it actually kind of is. <laughs> it's called the Princess Toadstool's three question marks, and then I'm told nothing. Um, I I found I did the panty. But, I'll tell you what, we're going to find a save block, and we're going to end this episode in just a few minutes, but hold on a minute! But wait, there's more. There is more. Someone's been stealing stuff all over town, and it's that jerk. And... Uh, the Humpty Dumpty? <laughs> You'll find out who he is soon enough, but I'll... He looks like Humpty Dumpty. Well, he has a heck of a story. And he even falls like Humpty, Humpty Dumpty. He's got parachute pants. Okay, well, Humpty Dumpty didn't have parachute pants. He's MC Humpty Dumpty. He's crying. Big boys don't cry, but it's just not fair. But sometimes you gotta cry like in Good Will Hunting, which we saw today. And rain continues to fall, but... And check out this kid playing Game Boy back here. Don't talk to me now. Yeah, that's that's me when I'm playing, like, Naruto on my Switch. But we're going to find out what happens in the rain in just a little bit. Actually, no. A little bit can be whatever amount of time. Whenever we get the episode up, you'll check it out maybe immediately. Maybe in 10,000 years. But, from all of us to you, we really enjoyed our time together. We're going to stand in the rain next to this guy who's crying. Thank you so much for joining us in our adventure today. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and follow us on Facebook and Twitter for more content.